Okay, we are still trying to figure out um, whether the president has full powers, whether he's... Uh, yeah, a lot of conversations have been going on around that. And just before you took that break, Jennifer, you wanted to say something yeah, to I respond to what I think it's very important. Um, I heard Moshimi was saying that strict compliance, the election must be held in strict compliance of the law, and they have the irreducible minimums. These irreducible minimums were not in the judgment of the Supreme Court of Kenya. The Supreme Court of Kenya decision was based on two issues and only two issues. That the Form 34A, the 11,000 Forms 34A, which were the results declared at the polling station, had not reached BOMAS, whereas Forms 34B, which was at, at a constitu the constituency returning officer forms, had. Okay? It was based on that, mm -hmm. on that issue. Now, that is a debate for another time, whether it was correct or whether it was not correct, yes? Or whether they, 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 they made the, the um, whether their decision was um, in accordance with the law. Okay. But more, and the second one was with regards to the scrutiny report. Now, if we remember, a scrutiny report was presented to the Supreme Court, and it was, it was, or it originated from, the it was overseen by court officials and independent ICT officials. Okay. That's the only two reasons on which the election was nullified. When my colleague here talks about the chief agent for Jubilee, Chirchi, hacking into um, servers, service. we can also, for the sake of debate, I can state the same thing, that actually Musalia Mudavadi and Orengo shouldn't be investigated. If you recall, during the election process, Musalia Mudavadi said they had been informed by secret sources or inside sources of attempts to hack in. So let us not take, that is the line that the politicians are using, mm. let us deal with the facts that are here. And the irreducible minimums are, are, are as Always, they have these, there's the word irreducible minimums came up in 2007, 2008. And do you think that's At the time to... when they, we were in, entered into negotiations for what is now known as a Nusu Mukati government. <clears throat> okay, so we have agreed to disagree on what this presidency is as we speak. I am certain. I have not agreed <laughs> to disagree. I have quoted the constitution. I have asked my colleague, 30 seconds. So my colleague learned you... friend here, show me where the word caretaker is. Very well. 30 seconds. I have, I have said in respect of this question that an election cannot be held outside of the three provisions I have cited. Uh -huh. 136, general election by reference to the day parliamentarians do the election. 140, 60 days after the declaration or determination of a petition or when a president dies. Outside of this, when, Uhuru, when will Uhuru Kenyatta call an election. Okay. Under, so what unfortunately, circumstances? Unfortunately, Under what circumstances? Yeah, unfortunately, the there demands, will be no president after NASA 60 days. Demands, unless Uhuru dies. NASA demands continue to be insatiable. Okay. They are like so. the grave. They can never be fulfilled by death. That's what the irreducible so according minimums to you, are. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta right now is a trustee. According to you, yes. he's he the president with, with full powers. powers. Okay. We are not agreeing. So let me look, let me move forward to something else. Um, whether or not there will be a constitutional crisis, if we don't have the election within the stipulated 60 days, let's listen in to different leaders and then we can have this conversation as well. And the danger that we now find ourselves in is that if the elections are not held within 60 days, then he will not have the constitutional authority or legitimacy to continue to be in that office. If you read the Constitution, possibly, and have a constructive interpretation of the Constitution, Articles 138 to 140, you will find that uh, the President, when not constitutionally in office, uh, there would be a requirement that you have an acting president who is not the incumbent president until an election is held. So this particular constitutional crisis that uh, we are getting ourselves into must be resolved as quickly as possible. Even 
in the very unlikely event that for whatever reason, the election wasn't held on the 60th day, that does not delegitimize the constitutional order of the day. And in many countries, there have been uh, various methods of expanding time, expanding the time within which something is to be done, either by the Supreme Court or by resolutions made by organs that are permitted to do so. Uh, to my own mind, therefore, there is absolutely no chance of a crisis around the date. Gilu Mwigai is no fool. He's simply being mischievous and dishonest. And we want to tell him not to play that game on Kenyans. Tell Kenyans the truth. The Supreme Court ordered for a repeat election in 60 days, expiring on 1st November. After 1st November, there will be no President Uhuru. What the Constitution then uh, provides for, and you can read it very carefully, is a provision that then makes the Speaker of the National Assembly a caretaker president for 90 days to have elections. If we don't have elections within 60 days of the Supreme Court ruling, then that is the path to follow. Gidu Mwigai is no fool. He's simply being mischievous and dishonest. And we want to tell him not to play that game on Kenyans. Okay, so will there or will there be not a constitutional crisis if Kenya does not go into an election within the stipulated 60 days? Mushimo, let me begin with you. Um, uh, let me begin by saying uh, that I disagree with people who have said that um, the speaker, because I've had arguments, you know, there have been all sorts of arguments outside of the issue of caretaker. Mm. There's been the issue that the speaker takes over. Oh, that was and I think that's a complete, uh, I disagree with that. I disagree with that position mm. because the only circumstance in which the uh, speaker takes over is when there is death before assuming office, and that's Article 139. And it states that a fresh election to the office of the president shall be held within 60 days. So the speaker, again, and I want to use this word, what does the speaker become? If you don't call him caretaker during that day, <laughs> he's either a trustee yeah. or a, a, a caretaker. And that's Article 139. And then that brings me again to the three pillars of when you can hold an election. And I won't go back there. So what happens if you don't have a vote takes us to what Article 1, 1 says, mm -hmm. is that people exercise their sovereignty directly or indirectly. Directly because they are the true sovereigns. But they delegate it and they elect leaders, some of whom then become executive, some of whom become in parliament and other places. Isn't it? That exercise that legitimizes the being in office of a president is exercised under Article 38, the right to vote. Mm -hmm. If you don't vote, and that vote is outside of what the Constitution calls the term, which is five years. The presidency is stripped off of all legitimacy and all authority. He continues to be in office so long as he enjoys the authority and the legitimacy conferred under Article 11 and 38. 38 is the one that you go and vote, and 11 is the one that says, we are your bosses, we are the true sovereigns. If we don't vote, where is the legitimacy of the president? Okay, but why would even someone have that thought of if we don't vote? Okay, put it another way. Uh, I already told you what the Supreme Court says, but let me put another scenario, very wild scenario. Assuming for the sake of argument, through an act of God, through an act of God, like the one that took place in, um, was it Mexico or Australia or where? Something really happens on that day. Okay. And there is no election. We must contemplate that there are circumstances that could cause people not to go and vote. Okay. Yes. Moshimio. Um, he says that, um, he, well, I want to go back to the article where he says that the Speaker of National Assembly shall oversee an election. They don't refer to the Speaker as a caretaker president, as a caretaker anything. He acts as president. Now, what is interesting is I've watched... Um, Honorable Watangula and Senator uh, Orengo. Orengo. These are really, really seasoned 
experienced lawyers and senior counsels, when they tell us that they cannot be, they will be a temporary president, they don't tell us under what article in the Constitution, they don't explain to us under what process this uh, president will be appointed, but they continue to use the term caretaker. It is not accidental. Caretaker, irreducible demands. Caretaker, irreducible demands. Nothing new about irreducible demands. It started last year. There's an IEBC that went home. It, now we want this IEBC to go home. And honestly, 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 I think Kenyans have got to yeah. see it as it, what it is for. When they say they will be no election, when they say well, then they use words like every citizen of Kenya has a right to prevent the commission of a crime on election day. They are suggesting anarchy or they are suggesting that certain constituencies will not have an election. And hence, if we're going to go as per the constitution and as per the qualitative methods, uh, the qualitative processes, then they are looking forward to a caretaker, Nusumukati, coalition government. Okay, and you've not really answered what I asked you. Will there be a constitutional crisis or not? If there will be no. I answered that in the first um, half of the show, and mm. I was very clear on it. We can, because will there be a constitutional crisis if we go to an election, if it is Uhuru Kenyatta wins again, mm. if um, the NASA candidate petitions the Supreme Court again, if the election is nullified and the, and the courts say we hold an election in 60 days, does it, is there a constitutional crisis? There isn't. Okay. Is there a constitutional crisis in this interim? Mashimiwa, this there back isn't. and forth. What are your thoughts? Final comments, 30 seconds. <clears throat> okay, my final comments on this is that one, um, we expect that uh, IEBC will rise up to the occasion, at least the, whatever remains of the IEBC. I still believe there are few people within the commissions who are up to uh, the task and who mean well for this country. Those people, if there are there, one or two of them, they must now stand up and find out where did the rain start beating us. And the, the, the proper place to look at that is the reasoned judgment of the Supreme Court, do a proper introspection to it and go and seal the loopholes. If and when that happens, I am telling you there will be an election and one person will shake the hand of the other and say Thank you have you. won. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. I want so, to agree. And I think that there's no problem within the IEBC. This time when we do go to an election, they just have to ensure that the Form 34A is transmitted before they announce, they announce the results, the final declaration of the results of the presidential election. And indeed, I want to agree with my colleague and my friend here that yes, we will have an election. I thank you that we have this show so that we're able to bring out what the issues are, yeah. what it is the politicians really want, which is not, may not be in, on, we're not, we may not be on the same line as what Kenyans want. And I think it's important that people like us come out and give Kenyans, actually, this is the truth and this is what the Constitution of Kenya says. And I would recommend that KTN does have a town hall meeting. Let's thrash out these, <laughs> let us we talk about all these, things, right? these issues I'll pass once and for all. And see. But and see if we can do. get a town hall yes, and talk I would, about this I really before the yeah. thing. <laughs> All right, Anthony Elwatt, advocate of the High Court, Madari Member of Parliament, and Jennifer Shamala, advocate of the High Court as well, and Jubilee MP. Thank you so much for your time. For the yeah. legal minds, we're just helping Kenyans to understand what exactly is going on, mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that we've uh, not agreed on what exactly this president is. But thank you all the same for your time. I hope we can do this again for the interest of our viewers. Thank you for watching Crossfire. I'm Linda Ogutu. Yvonne Okwara Matole is up next in what? Under 10 minutes with the checkpoint. <laughs>